So, first of all, if I wrote something like 2 plus 2, I claim that this should be considered to be definitionally equal to 4. Let me not write colon n every time. Let me just write it like this. It's supposed to be colon n for the natural numbers, but let me just write it like this. This is a true, correct definitional equivalence. Okay? Well, because 2 means, you know, a successor a successor of 0, right? So this is the 4 times. Uh, if you apply these equations, uh, and we treat those as definitional equivalence, as I stated, then you will get this as a correct definitional equivalence. That's no problem at all. Here's where it starts to get a little sticky. For any x in n, okay, with entailment, you will also be able to show that, for example, x plus 0 is definitionally equal to x. Okay, if you want, I'll put n here, but I'll tend to, I'll tend to drop that off. <coughs> okay? Why? Because it's the definition. x plus 0 is equal to x. Here's the definition. It says if you see this pattern, it's equivalent to that, so that's x. I deliberately chose x to be a variable here for the reason it will become apparent in the next line. However, it is not the case that if I have x in n, that 0 plus x is definitionally equivalent to x. This is not the case. You're not going to like that. Okay? And the reason is, the notion of definitional equivalence is the equivalence relation that's induced by the definitions only. It's the least congruence given by the definitions of the operators involved. So with respect to the first example, I use first and second. I define the operators by these equations, and I take the least congruence. Here, I defined addition by these equations, and I take the least congruence. This will not be in that relation. Okay? The reason is, this is inductive on the right, and there's nothing you can do. This is just a variable. No definitional rule applies because x is a variable. It's not zero. It's not a successor. Okay? In order to prove, however, you might say, but wait a minute. They stand for the same thing. Oh, that's true. They have the equality of reference. They both refer to x, whatever x may be. Okay? They have the same reference, but they are not definitional e definitionally equivalent. And then there are more kind of in-betweeny kind of examples, which can be maddening. So, for example, you will be able to prove, uh, I had a nice one written down here that looked beguiling. What did I write down? Oh, yeah. <coughs> that the successor of x is definitionally equivalent to x plus 1. This is valid. Why? Because definitionally equivalence is symmetric. Because it's symmetric, okay, x plus 1 means x plus successor of 0. x plus successor of 0 is successor of x plus 0, and x plus 0 is definitionally equal to x. It worked. But things that look really close to that do not work, okay, as principles of definitional equality. So, for example, x plus, uh, no, excuse me, the successor of x is unfortunately not definitionally equal to 1 plus x. You're not going to like that. Those are not definitionally equal. Okay? And the reason is, uh, there are ways I can prove this to you, which I have not developed. I can prove this to you, but it is not the case. And the reason is, is there's no way you're going to massage this around to make one of these rules apply because that's a variable. Okay? And even worse examples then start coming up. For example, if you give me two variables, x and y, you cannot expect x plus y to be definitionally equal to y plus x. It's not. The reason is, definitionally speaking, there's no way to massage this equation to make one of these rules apply and to get the equation to be there. What is missing? So from the ones that fail, this one has failed. What is missing is a principle of proof by induction. Okay? Because what proof by induction does is it says, if you have an equation involving a variable, it's sufficient to show that it holds for all the ground instances. If it holds for 0 and for 1 and for 2 and for 3 and for 4 and for 5 and for 6 and so on through all of the natural numbers, if all of those things are true, then it holds for the variable.
But that's a form of evidence. And a form of evidence is exactly what you don't have for an analytic judgment. Okay? So a definitional equivalence is analytic. It has to be self-evident. Anything that requires additional evidence, like a proof by induction, is going to be synthetic. And the finest synthetic equivalence is going to be called, I'll call it denotational equivalence, or equality of reference. So it will be true, then, in the sense of equality of reference, that these are equal, but they're not definitionally equal. So then I can get rid of the Xs. See? <clears throat> and, I, and I'm warning you that my notation, nobody's notation is standard, so I'm just using a notation at the moment that I find appealing. Okay. So those are valid equations in the sense of equality of reference. They are not valid equations in the sense of definitional equality. Okay? So that is the first point I would like to get at, and uh, we'll call, we'll, I'll consider myself to be finished. I'm going to go even further in this direction by introducing the notion of a homotopy, and we're going to get to that a little bit later. So this is higher dimensional or homotopy equivalence. And I'll, I'll get to that later. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll get back to that. Okay. Is it possible to do what? Because somehow the definitions are not uh, commutative. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is it possible? To well, the question is, you know, at some point you have to write down a definition in a way that is clear that it's well defined. So I'm using a particular principle of definition where I, if I say to you, I'm defining addition by these equations, you agree with me that it's a valid definition. If you start checking in more and more conditions, okay, pretty soon it becomes unclear. Maybe uh, if you didn't define the function you wanted to, maybe uh, everything's equal to everything now, uh, maybe it, it's ill-defined, it has multiple values, and it becomes murky. So what I was doing is, so what will happen to you is, it's always going to be the case that there's going to be some accepted forms of definition. And then as soon as you accept those down, then you're going to run into distinctions of this flavor. In other words, there's nothing rigged or special about this example. It's, it's quite illustrative of the thing you're going to run into over and over and over again. Okay? And it's going to be the bane of your existence when you're doing your work. Okay? It will drive you crazy, I promise you. Okay? It's a major issue. We're not used to it. See, in conventional like textbook math, it's all equal, equal, equal. Nobody cares about forms of equality and fine grain distinctions. In the computational setting, which is what we're doing, it matters. Because one can be computed in terms of the other. It's different from they denote the same thing. And that matters. Like the, the, the sense, okay, matters a lot to a computer scientist. And so that's why we're in that business, okay? So from a computer science point of view, it's, Okay, we're interested in the programs themselves, the proofs are mathematical objects. I care about such distinctions. I can't just gloss over them, which is the conventional thing to do. Moreover, a lot of us believe this is a better way to do math anyway. Okay, but that's a bit more uh, contentious issue. Okay, but, but at, at any rate, okay, uh, we care about these distinctions. So you'll notice that as we go through all of our work here, uh, there's a lot of like this kind of detail work in a way, but it's, that's what leads to the whole thing hanging together and being so satisfying. Uh, you know, it all matters, and so it's really, I hope that you'll see that it's quite beautiful. So what I'll do is I'll pick up next time in talking about equality of reference and equality of sense. I might say a few things about homotopy equivalence, but that will come up a little, I have to develop a lot of machinery before I can really do that justice. So, uh, but I'll give you a flavor about it. And then uh, I will then be talking about dependent types. And so I will be diverging, okay, uh, from this point on. But the idea of equality is, uh, uh, is central to understanding how dependent types work and what they're about. So that's why I needed to get to this in this lecture. Okay, so this is uh, an overview of the kind of thing you'll be doing and uh, a starting point for what I'll be doing. All right, thanks for your attention. <clears throat>